kiddos! In today's video, we're going to be talking about comparing fractions. Our learning target is I can use benchmark numbers to help me compare fractions. So a benchmark number is a number that you're going to use to help you measure things, which is kind of what a benchmark is in general. Um, for example, I know my own height and I can use that as a benchmark to help me estimate things. In this case, we're going to be using the numbers one half and one whole, or one, to help us compare fractions. Let's get started. Okay, first we're going to focus on this problem. Jasmine's swimming lesson lasts for two thirds of an hour. It takes her one sixth of an hour to do her homework. Will Jasmine spend more time on her homework or at her swimming lesson? Take a moment and do some estimating or solve this for yourself in your head, and then I'm going to work through the way to use benchmark numbers to help you figure it out. You might honestly be using this strategy already and not realize it. Pause the video if you need more time. All right, let's keep going. Well, first, let's model it by thinking about a number line. You can use number lines to help you compare fractions. On this number line, we showed where two thirds is in the green, and we showed where one sixth is in the blue. We also marked zero and one and one half to help us compare these. Now the number line shows that one sixth is closer to zero and that two thirds is closer to one. So, that means that two-thirds is greater than one-sixth. Two-thirds is greater than one-sixth, and one-sixth is less than two-thirds. So, using that one-half as a benchmark, we could have shortcut that a little bit. The number line shows that one-sixth is less than one-half, and that two-thirds is greater than one-half. This might have been something that you were already able to visualize in your head. You know that one half is equivalent to three sixths, so one sixth would have to be less than a half. On the other hand, you've seen a lot of pictures about two thirds, and you know that two thirds is slightly more than a half. Knowing where those two numbers fall relative to one half can help you know which one's greater. If two thirds is greater than a half, then for sure it's going to be greater than one-sixth, which is less than a half. All right. So let's work through some connection problems. In these problems, we're going to be using the number one as a benchmark. And we're going to be thinking about two fractions, 11 tenths and 7 eighths. Before we do that, take a look at that first fraction. Something about it should look weird to you. Do you see it? 11 tenths is an improper fraction. The top is bigger than the bottom. Improper fractions are fractures, fractions that are greater than one. 10 tenths would be equivalent to one. 11 tenths is more than one. That's gonna be important because one is our benchmark. So we know that 11 tenths is greater than our benchmark, greater than one. That's the first question, actually. Which fraction is greater than one? 11 tenths. Our next question is which of those is less than one? And it's pretty obvious since we already figured out this is greater than one. It has to be 7 eighths. You can tell that also because 8 eighths would be equivalent to one. So 7 eighths is less than 1. Using what we just figured out, which of those fractions is greater? Well, one of the fractions was greater than 1, and one of the fractions was less than 1. That tells us which of those is greater in general. 11 tenths is greater because it's bigger than our benchmark number 1. If the other fraction is less than our benchmark number, it's also less than 11 tenths. And finally, 
let's use these greater than, less than, or equal symbols to show the comparison. Remember, you could think about this by drawing two dots on the sides that have the larger number, the greater number, and one dot on the smaller, and then connecting them like that. Or you could think about it, um, the, uh, the alligator metaphor is always popular. Think about it like a mouth and it's gonna eat the bigger number. Whatever way helps you remember, it's all good. But this is how you would write the comparison. Two more comparison problems, and then I'm going to turn you loose to practice this on your own. Use the comparison symbols, greater than, less than, or equal, to complete this comparison and explain how you know. Try to solve this one, pause the video if you have to, before I spoil it. You're comparing 5 tenths with 3 fourths. Which one is greater? You ready? 3 fourths is greater. Now, you can use the benchmark number 1 half to help you. 5 tenths is equivalent to 1 half. This is exactly a half. What fraction with fourths as the denominator would be equivalent to 1 half? It'd be 2 fourths. 2 fourths is the same as 1 half. But here we have 3 fourths. So on this side, we had a number that was exactly a half. And on this side, we have a number that's greater than a half. That means this must be the greater number. And so it is. Last practice question. Nathan walked 10 tenths of a mile. Sarah walked 19 twentieths of a mile. Who walked a greater distance? Be ready to explain. Okay, pause it if you need more time. Well, in this case, I'm not going to use the half benchmark number because 10 tenths is equivalent to one whole. Nathan walked one whole mile. When I look at this fraction, it's not 20 twentieths, so it's not equivalent to one, and it's not an improper fraction, like 22 twentieths, that would be greater than 1. 19 twentieths is super close to being a whole 20 twentieths, but it's just a little bit less. It's not quite equal to one whole. It's less. So in the end, Nathan walked a greater distance because he walked one whole mile. Sarah's really close but she didn't quite walk one whole mile. All right, next up, it's time for you to go solve some problems in the jam. Remember, if you get stuck, you can always come to office hours and I'll help you out. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.